GM fans. Sorry there hasn't been a new episode in such a long time. I just want to give you something to hold you over, so let's take a look at my NES collection. As you can see, it's grown at a frightening rate. Many of these games I get as donations, so for those of you that donated some of these, consider this video my personal thanks. I'm pretty close to owning every NES game ever made, but when defining what it means to have every game, it's not so easy. You gotta take into account all the different species of NES. First, there's the official games. They usually come in regular gray cartridges. Some of these were only released in the United States, and some of them were only released in Europe. It's not easy to find a list that accounts for all of them. Then you have all the unlicensed games. These were games made without Nintendo's official seal of approval. The most common of these companies must be Tengen. They usually come in black, but sometimes gray. But like I said, they were pretty common. I remember renting some of these from the video store. I'd see it and go, oh wow, that's a weird looking game. Then you have all the colored greens games. These are the really crappy ones that come in blue, sometimes black. Of course, they changed their name to Wisdom Tree and started making Bible games. But I'm sure you know all about that by now. Then you have the Comerica games. These come in gold, but the most unusual thing is the switch in the back. Position B. Only use this position if the game does not work with position A. Well, that explains a lot. And check this out. Do not drop, do not get wet, do not leave in direct sunlight. Interesting. Can you feed it after midnight? Then there's the slashing games. This is when you're really scraping the bottom of the ship barrel. NES lists don't even count these. Look at this. Hellfighter. Ooh. I have no idea what this is all about. There's so many other obscure game companies. I won't mention them all. There's some games which are so rare, like stadium events and Nintendo World Championship, that's pretty much impossible I'll ever get those, unless it's a reproduction card. I put all my games in alphabetical order, which is a pain in the ass. Some games are hard to tell what letter they start with. Like this one. You think it's just called Gilligan's Island, but turn around and read the fine print. It's the adventures of Gilligan's Island. Why not just Gilligan's Island? That's what the show is called. Here's a game Viper. But really, it's codenamed Viper. You need a magnifying glass to read it. What's this one called? Intruder, right? Well, no, it's Flight of the Intruder. This one, they were just being idiots. They couldn't fit the whole title. It doesn't matter, I can put these games wherever I want, but when you try to check it off the list, it gets real confusing. The Wizards and Warriors games really have a problem with their titles. The first one's called Wizards and Warriors, the second one's called Iron Sword, and the third one's called Wizards and Warriors 3. So do you put them together or alphabetical? It always sucks when the games don't have end labels. But there's one company that makes a very deliberate attempt at being an ass, Joico. The game's called City Connection. So why doesn't the end label say City Connection? The title goes here, not the fucking game company. Another thing that brings my piss to a boil is how many times people feel the need to plaster stickers all over the labels. If you have a video game store, do us a favor, don't put the stickers on the side. It's inconvenient when you can't read the Title. And even if you try to peel them off, it ruins it. Check this out, high glide 99 cents. This piece of shit's not even worth that much. Oh, and look at this. Please rewind. Um, this isn't a videotape. How am I supposed to rewind a fucking game? Some games come in really bad shape. Look at this one. Like what happened? How did it get like this? I would never do this. I take good care of my games. I think the funniest game cartridge I have is Ultimate League Soccer. Look what it says. Kick ass sports series? I am holding an NES cartridge that says kick ass. The weirdest game I have is this one, Little Red Hood. It's clearly supposed to be Little Red Riding Hood, but why is it shaped this way? This part of the top, why does it need to stick out? It's not convenient at all because it covers the game next to it. What a fucked up game. Another thing about the NES library that comes to mind is how many baseball games there are. There's so many baseball games I can't even count. But even stranger, I think, is all the golf games. I mean, it's fucking golf. How many games can you make? I own some of the original boxes, but they're harder to find. You know what people used to do with their boxes back in the day? They just throw them in the garbage. For all we knew, it was just packaging. It had no purpose. If only we knew these things would be collector's items. But why is it so hard to find NES games that come with the instruction manual? Is it so hard not to lose them? I used to tape all mine together. I can understand throwing away the boxes, but why the manuals? What do people do with them? Wipe their ass on it? Well, this video got way longer than I thought it would. I just wanted to show my appreciation for helping out. Just by watching my videos and coming to my website, you're supporting me. But it's great that so many of you are sending games and donations by the PayPal button up there. You don't have to do that. But I wanted to show you where it's going toward. I also have to buy DV tapes to shoot the videos, DVDRs to record the game footage, and hard drives to store all the data. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes that most people don't know about. So I just want to say thanks for helping out. I know you're all eager to see new nerd episodes, and I just want to let you know they're coming. So thanks a lot. I'll see you later.